So, thank you very much, Warren. Uh, not just for a great talk, but also for uh, keeping it very concise. <laughs> thank you, Warren. Um, you, go, you, you go from the curve of remaining life expectancy as a function of age for post-secondary educated Austrians to the line for an index country and then you drop down and find out what age that is. Another thing you could have done, which would have been simpler, is look at remaining life expectancy at age 60 in different countries and then subtract that from the Austrian or vice versa. So the two would have given you the same answer if those curves were strictly parallel. I don't know whether they're strictly parallel, and I'm asking if you have looked at this simpler index, remaining life expectancy at age 60 in the index country minus that in Austria, and whether it makes any difference to the conclusions that you reach. It, it, the answer is uh, yes, we, 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 we've done a number of publications where we've uh, published those, uh, those data, and it doesn't make any difference. Same answer. It's the same answer. Thank you. Yes, uh, just a short question because the Finns are not doing better as the Austrians. I mean, you're comparing post-secondary education. Is it because maybe like in this post-secondary education, the Austrians are more selective group like the Finns are because they had higher education earlier on and it's a more maybe not so selected group as it is in Austria, that it's uh, maybe an explanation behind it? It could be the explanation, although my, my favorite explanation is walking in the Alps. That seems to do very well for mathematicians after age 104. Uh, and they think it's too cold in Finland, perhaps, in the far north to, uh, to walk at the same time as they walk in Austria. Thank you very much. Just on this last point of the finish, Man, um, so fortunately I'm married to a Finnish woman where there is this disadvantage is, is not there. But for the Finnish men, they are famous, they had a big problem, particularly in Eastern Finland, of cardiovascular disease. And that has, actually has been a topic of some of the most famous epidemiological studies, what is related to, first they thought it's genetic, and then they had a, a major uh, healthy food campaign. So it, actually when I worked in the, the Finnish statistical office was my first job, ever after graduating from university, there was all, only salad bars, you get uh, very low fat meat, this was already uh, in the, uh, well around 1980, and then I came back to the canteen of the Austrian statistical office, where there was no salad, just as fat as possible, the food, and I asked why can't I have a salad, said, well people don't demand it, so it's, in Finland it was sort of uh, with an intention to improve the public health, and this campaign of healthy food has been tremendously successful, so for the younger cohorts of men in Finland, this disadvantage has disappeared, but for the older, it's still around. So, any other questions which have arisen in the meantime, any comments? Just a five second comment. So if the Austrian canteens would improve their food, the Austrian advantage in life expectancy would increase it much further. <laughs> <laughs> and the strict don't smoke it. <laughs> so Warren, why does the UN stick to the 60 boundary? Uh, Sergey and I are working very hard to, uh, to get them to stop there. <laughs> and, uh, I recently gave a talk at, uh, at the UN, and there was very, a lot of excitement. They said, yes, yes, we don't like the 60 boundary, uh, but we are very bureaucratic, and we, uh, it is gr with great difficulty that we change things, but we are hoping that we can, and we would like to, and thank you very much for pointing us in this direction, and maybe one day it will actually happen. Uh, I am hopeful that, uh, we will live long enough to see it. <laughs> right. I don't see a 
on the other uh, hand. So we're also 